sterilization. Do you know your peers are safe? Part four, I'm gonna cover sterilization today and body piercing basics, episode number 16. So stick around. For those that are new to the channel um, and don't know who I am, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa. And we um, share space with Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I'm talking to you about these things, I'm talking to you about them on a level of expertise of being a uh, doing this process for quite a number of years, um, roughly about 25 years. And what I have found is the best methods or the best techniques to actually do keep your uh, jewelry, etc., sterile. This is not really uh, designed to educate anybody uh, as far as on a professional level. I do not suggest doing piercings at home if that's what you're looking for. Uh, this is not going to be something you're going to be able to do at home unless you happen to have a an autoclave laying around. I doubt it. Um, also, it can be a good introduction to somebody that's thinking about getting into the body piercing industry to kind of give them an idea of how we do things or um, kind of just give them some basics. The main goal of this video, though, is for those that are new to body piercing and even those that have been around for a while so that you have a better understanding of exactly what sterilization is, what happens in an autoclave when they do sterilize it, and how that particular item is stored and all those little things. So when you go and you ask your piercer and you want to know whether or not they're sterilizing their equipment correctly or they're taking your safety at risk, you know what questions to ask. Um, you know what that answer should be. So let's get started on it. Sterilization. What is sterilization? Sterilization is a process um, that eliminates, kills, removes, and deactivates all forms of life in biological agents. In other words, things like fungi, viruses, bacteria, spores, microorganisms of all kinds. And importantly, it affects or eliminates the possibility of reproduction. So it kills it off. And that's what we're talking about with biological agents. The difference between this in, in sanitation and disinfection is, yes, you are killing off and eliminating the microorganisms that are on the, in the area at the time. However, if left to its own device, which means the minute you take it out of, uh, out of the liquid or the liquid is dried or the process has uh, ended, the area will begin to be repopulated with all those microorganisms. With sterilization, we're killing off the seeds, the spores, all the way down to the level. So it's a little different than sanitation or disinfection. And that's the biggest difference. Sterilization, unlike disinfection, sanitation, or even pasteurization, kills, deactivates, and eliminates all forms of life or other biological agents that are present in the area. Meaning, once again, we're, even, we're going down to the seedlings. We're going down to the spores. So let's talk about the process. Um, already at this point in time, uh, you've already done the uh, disinfecting of the area. You cleaned up all your stuff. You've done decontamination, which I covered in the last video last week, which if you're interested in that, I'd suggest checking that out. I'll put one of them eyes up here to make sure you can get to that quickly. That process of decontamination includes soaking your hard surface cleaner to basically chemically sterilize the equipment. And this is on reusable equipment. We are uh, not, not new stuff. Then it is uh, scrubbed uh, underwater using an industrial grade detergent in a brush to eliminate any micro yeah, particles and etc. from it. Then uh, rinsed, put in a ultrasonic cleaner for a cycle of about 10 minutes to re completely remove everything else, rinsed, and then left to dry. That point is where we start up with the sterilization process. 
The first thing we do is we mark the bags. We want to put a date on there for exactly when this particular um, pouch was autoclaved. And the reason is, is that they do need to be autoclaved as those bags deteriorate, usually roughly about every six months. Um, so it's always important to have a date on there. Uh, something I kind of lacked on in the past and I've tried to get better at. The other thing is um, you want to make sure that the package is brand new. Uh, you cannot you reuse sterilization pouches. They will deteriorate just like everything else. The kind I like to use are the kind with the uh, transparent blue side in the paper back. Uh, the advantage to them is that you can see exactly what's in there to a degree. Um, but also, it gives you that paperback that you can easily use a felt tip marker and mark on sizing, etc. when you're dealing with jewelry, prices, um, when it was done, or when the uh, sterilization process was done, and uh, any other important information. For example, uh, you don't like you're sterilizing 15 taper pens. Uh, it's important to have the size on the back than try to eyeball them every time. Um, otherwise, you're going to probably hurt somebody at some point when you put that, try to put that 14 gauge or 20 gauge or 12 gauge taper pin into a 16 gauge hole to put jewelry in. It's not going to feel good. Um, anyway, uh, I digress. Uh, once that uh, basically uh, put the equipment into the pouch, once it's been marked, uh, peel off, there's an adhesive on the top and it folds over, which makes the package airtight to a degree. Then they are placed in an autoclave. Now an autoclave is a medical grade um, machine. Uh, it uses heat and pressure to kill off or sterilize whatever's inside of it. There are various different types. There is the steam type, there's chemical type, there, chemical type there's the uh, cassette style, there's the ones that have the added uh, vacuum chamber feature too. Uh, probably the best is the one with the vacuum chamber, but they are a bit on the pricey side. Um, generally, what will happen when you come in for a piercing is either the, the piercer peels it out of pre-sterilized bags, or there are some that use the cassette style sterilization where they can just put the jewelry, whatever items they're using, into a kind of a tr metal tray, put it in the autoclave, and it'll do it much faster, about 10 minutes. However, this is going to be probably the most common method that you're going to see or the most common style of autoclave. Now what an autoclave does um, is it has distilled water in it. Mine in, um, actually runs its own cycle. You program it in advance and it runs whatever you want. But the goal is to heat up the inside of that autoclave to at least 121 degrees Celsius under 15 pounds of pressure. And it does that by steam. Um, and you want to hold that 15 pounds of pressure for roughly about 20 minutes. What it's doing is it's heating up and killing off and cooking all those little pieces of biological tissue and organisms, and etc. And then it's squishing them. Basically, it is a hospital grade pressure cooker. That's probably the most common thing to what an autoclave is. Now, should you use an auto a pressure cooker to autoclave your materials? Absolutely not. It is not going to have the same effect. It's e it's not going to be able to be cleaned the same way, um, and it'll probably not work. Uh, just my experience. I know that back in the day they used to use them, but I'm not going to advise you to use that at home. Don't put a bunch of jewelry in your Instapot and fill it up with a little bit of water in the way we go. They are not designed to do that. Autoclaves are designed to sterilize metal equipment. They have various different studies based on the type. Probably the most common, like I said, is pouches. Once it goes through that process and it's heated up to 121 degrees Celsius or higher, I run that at 135, then it will uh, start building up pressure. Once it gets to 15, then it'll start a timer and that will run for about 20, I usually set it about 21 to 25 minutes just to be on the safe side. Then um, it will slowly begin to depressurize and cool off. Um, and most of them will have, like mine, a, um, a drying mode. 
you pop the door once that pressure has been dropped, hit the timer, and it will dry inside the autoclave for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on what you set it out. The reason why you don't want to pull those materials out immediately is often the bags, especially the paper side, will become completely saturated with water. If you don't allow them to dry in their natural state, it makes it very fragile and increases the likelihood of being contaminated unless it's completely dry. So we want to keep it in that clean environment until you remove it. Then they're stored in a rigid container, um, preferably airtight, not always, but in at least a rigid container until needed or until it's time to re-sterilize them. Jewelry is done exactly the same way. Anything that you're going to be using in a healing pro or in a piercing process um, is sterilized using these methods. Uh, there are other types of autoclaves on the market. Um, also, a lot of places will use what is called uh, single-use or pre-sterilized equipment. Um, piercing, unlike tattooing, because tattooing has almost moved 100% single-use toss, single-use toss. The problem with piercing is we use a lot of different tools and there is just not a plastic or disposable option out there that is going to work very well with what we needed to do. Some of them work fairly well, but not all of them. Uh, we do use single-use needles and etc. and mostly those are bought in bulk and they are pre-sterilized, usually chemically in an industrial situation um, wherever that particular needle is produced. The same thing goes for disposable forceps and etc. Um, if your piercer uses those, those are sterilized off-site. I usually go through, if I've had a box of needles that's been uh, more than, let's say, six months uh, to a year, I'll usually begin to just setting them into what I call setups where I have, you know, maybe a couple Q-tips or cotton-tip applicators if I need that and cork and everything I might need for a piercing um, and then sterilize them a second time inside the bag just to be on the safe side. I think that pretty much covers it. If you have any questions, uh, would like to expand on anything I brought up, or would like to discuss it further, please leave a comment. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, it just makes me happy to know that you enjoyed it, and maybe you walked away with some information. I hope you get educated from these. That's all the point of them. If you like body piercing, in tattooing and body art in general, I would suggest subscribing. We post at least three new videos, sometimes four new videos a week, um, covering body piercing and tattooing and anything else that comes up of interest. And hit that notification bell if you want to get notified on a regular basis. If you don't want to get those notifications all the way, all the time, don't hit the notification bell. Lastly, uh, good luck with your piercings, and if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your piercing needs in the future.